In the run-up to Labour Party conference, Keir Starmer has given a series of interviews to ITV's regional news teams. And when speaking to ITV in the North East, Starmer was played a clip of voters in Consett, County Durham. Take a look at how he responds. We've been out today to, to Consett, County Durham, to ask people for their views on your leadership. If I can play you a little bit of that now. Tell me what you think Keir Starmer stands for. Um don't know. All I know is a Labour leader and that's it. I don't think he's as strong as what he should be. I mean, this guy, um, Boris Johnson, he should be giving him a good head, really. I thought Labour was about, you know, the people, the working class people and that, um, but I'm not too sure that's what he stands for. What do you make of that? Well, it reinforces my point that in the last 18 months I've not been able to get out and make the argument in the way I wanted to. What I would ask you to do, next time you're in Darlington, I think on your patch. Concert get, that, that is. Yeah, I know Darlington, but get, uh, just to give you a, a counter example, get in Darlington, when you're next there with a camera, go and talk to the taxi rank drivers, because every time I've been through Darlington, I've been having a conversation. I, I stopped and talked to them about, they were having a really tough time in COVID. I stopped, took the time, talked to them. I actually went back to talk to them two or three weeks later. And they said, Boris Johnson got off the train at Darlington and walked right past them without acknowledging them. And they said, I stopped, talked to them, heard what they were saying, and then came back. Uh, so actually, take your camera, you know, take, uh, that, <laughs> well, I, 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 you. I take this on the chin, take your camera to Darlington, to the taxi driver. That was Keir Starmer saying, they might not like me in concert, but if you go to a different nearby town and find two specific taxi drivers who I've spoken to at length, then they will tell you something different. Um, also, the only reason we're expecting them to say something different is because they were impressed that Keir Starmer talked to them twice, apparently, according to this anecdote. Ash, it's, a, it's an interview tactic I, I'm not sure I've seen before in political interviews where they say, these people we spoke to didn't like you. say, well, ah, uh, 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 I've got this one genuine working class reference who happens to be in a, a town somewhere else in Britain who maybe you should interview instead. I mean, it was such a weak response as well because it wasn't, oh, you might not know this, but I actually spoke to these taxi drivers in Darlington and this is what I did for them. His whole boast is... I acknowledged the existence of these taxi drivers in Darlington, not once, but on two <laughs> separate occasions. I spoke to them and I looked them in their little flinty eyes and everything. Like it actually comes across as incredibly patronizing and condescending as if he thinks he's the queen and merely waving out of a motorcade will, you know, make these peasants days. Um, you know, so I think it was a really weird way to respond to it. I think though, there is something really interesting in the framing of that entire interview. And I think that this is something which was established in 2019 and is going to keep happening until the left works out how to deal with the fact that its support comes from, and when I say the left, I'm talking about the wider left, you know, really from Jeremy Corbyn all the way up to, I know we're gonna talk about him in a second, Wes Streeting. Um, but this problem, which is that the left's core support is coming from, you know, electorally inconvenient concentrations of, you know, under 40s who live in the cities. And now what this whole notion of the red wall and in particular the red wall town has become is a disciplining tool. So you can go out, you can do any old vox pop and you can interview people who predominantly from that video are over 40 years old. And you've got a brilliant video package of people saying exactly why they think you're a prick or why, why you're a failure. And the job of the Labour Party is to go, um, well, I like me, I guess. And that's great. And you don't see the reverse happening, right? So you don't see somebody with a microphone going down to I don't know, Tower Hamlets and going, what do you think about Boris Johnson? Well, obviously people would go, I think he's a prick, I hate him. Um, but it's not used as a disciplining tool in the same way, because when it's framed like this, it's, ah, you don't speak to the country. Now, Keir Starmer's response to that was incredibly weak. It was farcical how silly his response was. Also, it made it sound as if he'd mixed up concert in Darlington. You know, he didn't even say, well, if you go down the road in Darlington, I spoke to at least two taxi drivers on two separate occasions. Um, you know, it sounded almost like he'd mixed it up and he, he kind of never recovered from it. But this is a line of questioning and a, a method of delegitimizing progressive politics in this country that ultimately we're all going to have to get a grip on. You can't keep 
allowing 2019 to be the stick which hits you around the head and you know you've got a video package of people telling you you're shit and you've got to go oh yeah no i am actually really shit um you've, you've got to come up with a more compelling response so mm. otherwise no one's going to vote for you if you go oh yeah actually they're right i am a cunt like <laughs> why is anybody going to vote for you well the response as well should be you know a confident response is to say well look i'm sorry they think that but i think um if they were to hear our program for the country, what Labour would be offering, and then you list those policies, mm. then uh, I, I, I hope I would be able to change their mind. Instead, he says, well, they might not like me, but these two guys in Darlington do. <laughs> <laughs> Just sort of like, uh, <laughs> okay, uh, that's, that's fine. <laughs> Yeah, because also that's great. That's good for you. That's good for Darlington. <laughs> yeah. I'm happy. Because well, the other thing both. with a political interview is a chance for you to communicate to the public what you you know you're trying to change people's minds in that interview. And do you seriously think that anyone is going to feel like, oh, maybe Keir Starmer? Oh, you know, I do. Tr I do actually trust um, taxi drivers in Darlington. I mean, also these taxi drivers—they were probably just being polite, right? And the, you, you don't expect a taxi driver to say, look, like, no, you're an idiot. You know blah, 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 blah. They're probably just being polite to the guy. Very Do you remember bizarre. in the 2008 presidential election, Joe the Plumber? Yes, but so I can't remember. The whole remember Joe the Plumber discourse. It was um, when John McCain was sort of trying to prove his, like, you know, connection to the blue collar man was telling all these anecdotes about what Joe the Plumber said. And then, like, reporters went out and they found the real Joe the Plumber, um, who, who, who wasn't, you know, who was going to vote for John McCain. But it was also kind of, ridiculous because it was like i've met somebody who works in a manual profession and they've also proved the perfect vehicle through which i can ventriloquize the things that i already wanted to say like there's no clumsy there's, it's always clumsy when you do that there's no elegant way to try and pull that off i think it's always faintly absurd mm. the other interesting thing about this particular anecdote is why does Keir Starmer in particular know the taxi drivers in Darlington? Um, he, he, he's seen them at least twice, um, potentially knows them quite well. Uh, it's worth noting the seat of Starmer's former political secretary and key ally and friend, apparently, Jenny Chapman, is in Darlington. Um, we won't delve any further into that particular topic, but she did go on to receive a peerage from Keir Starmer. Mm -hmm.